is not in a great shape still Have, at all. Do you think it's, um, you know, how long? What, what do you oh, do I think? Oh, I think at least another couple of years before they know yeah. what's happening over there. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, you know, we all had that perfect storm a while back with the, you know, the, the SAG and the Writers Guild strikes and then the, mm. the GFC and that just sort of cleaned up a lot of production. And, mm. and uh, the networks are now slightly got bigger budgets to buy projects, but they're still only offering half as much as what they, uh, they were in the, in the good old days. So uh, people are going to have to learn how to make things for um, a lot less money, that's all. Okay. Um, last, yes? Just a quick question. Are they moving away from more reality shows in the States, or is that trend shifting back to... Uh, it it did become the big flavour of the month, and a lot of that was to do with the strikes and that as well, because, you know, the drama people couldn't write. I mean, although they, they do have writers that work on reality too, so believe it or not. Um, but no, I think that, you know, there is, uh, if you've noticed, the, the shows like my friends, um, and, and an Australian actually writes NCIS, which is the number one show, basically, um, over there. Um, those top quality shows like the NCIS's and the, and the 24's and, and all that sort of stuff, they're still um, getting good mileage. But, you know, there's, um, you know, below that, I think there's a, a void because if it's, you know, reality is a lot cheaper to produce than some of those other, you know, lesser drama shows that might not get the same audience. So it's all based on ratings still. So it'll always be based on ratings and if, you know, if you get a reality show that's going to um, rate through the roof, they're going to make it. Uh, but I think the, you know, at least the good thing over there is that, is that the quality shows and a lot of feature film guys, as you know, Ridley Scott's company and all that sort of stuff, they're all making, you know, like shows like Numbers and that stuff. They're, you know, they've gone from the feature films into higher quality TV because it's cheaper. So, they, they, like I say, they're coming down to doing cheaper stuff, but it's still good quality stuff. Yeah. Uh, Vic, another question. Um, the, the, um, how's the Australian dollar affecting the ability of, uh, of local cinematography staff and, and other support staff to actually get into the US market and, and, and actually do work? How much is the Aussie dollar killing that off? Oh, the Aussie dollar is killing off, you know, the American work and overseas work coming here, which is putting a lot of companies, I believe, Analux is up for sale and lots of stuff that depend on that sort of work. I've contracted in my business, and a lot of other people have as well. That would, you know, I used to do mostly, uh, I didn't do a real lot of Australian stuff at all. I mostly did American, Chinese, Japanese, a lot of international sort of films. It was what I had all my bread and butter, you know. Is it killing it going the other way too, for people actually going over there to work or not? I don't think so. And I mean, Australia, I mean, Phil, basically, as he said, he's um, was the king of making all the independent films in Australia for years, and, uh, and he's discovered a lot of talent, and you know, and you find that like Mel and Ryan and all these guys, uh, they cut their teeth here with the likes of Phil, and then they go over to the States, and that's where you have to go if you want to sort of like work on the bigger films anyway. So um, that's just the trend, and I don't think it affects it going that way. Um, the dollar's only affecting the business coming in at the moment. Thanks very much. Okay, I think um, we're done. No one else? One more? One Lin Linny? Yeah. Okay, can you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You got a um, voice. Well, I go to a place called uh, A Touch of Class. <laughs> uh, in, in all seriousness, Lynn, uh, what, uh, in the, if I was in Sydney and Melbourne, uh, I'd I put a finance company together with me to raise the dough. In, uh, in 2002 or three or whatever it was, we raised 18 million to make three pictures. And, um, but it was all tax-driven money. You know, you've got to realise now there's no, there's no more angels out there. There used to be angels in, in the good old days, you know, in the 70s. People would put a thousand bucks, a couple of thousand bucks in. But nowadays, uh, those films, because they were under $100,000, uh, multiplied by 10, which is what, what they are today, you, there aren't those investors around, so you, what you've got to do is you've got to go and get yourself a DG, a distribution guarantee from a company internationally or domestically. Then 
try and get a government agency in to support you because if you're making a film, you've got to make it over a million bucks to get your 40% produce, the producer's offset. And of course, then they dilute that. It's really 33% because they won't allow certain things to be discounted. So you've got, for instance, on a $1.2 million budget uh, with an Australian story, an Australian cast, an Australian crew, shot in Queensland, you'll get incentives from Queen, the Queensland government for the Queensland crew and cast. On a $1.2 million budget, you probably get 30, 40 grand there. You'll get your, produ your producer's offset, which is in reality 40% discounted down to say 33%. So there's $400,000 there. So now you've got $430,000 of a $1.2 million movie in your pocket. You've got to go and raise the rest. So if you can get a distributor in to p perhaps put up half a million bucks, you'll probably get the difference by way of mates, you know, mates around the place. And that's the only way you can do it today. And that's, that's a very good example of, of a budget shot on a $1.2 million budget shot in Australia today. Okay, one more. Have you ever thought about product placement, you know, like James Bond's got the Range Rover in the, in the thing, and, you know, have you thought of any avenues like that in the past? Or? Yeah, we've got, we've got a film called The Big One came to me, you know, and, and recently. Very good film, very good script. Uh, it came with uh, a car sales company, car yard, uh, putting up a car or two, and the writer, he was very clever, he got some dough involved, but again, it wasn't enough. But yes, every film I've made has had product placement, uh, ever, uh, but not enough. I mean, it's just not enough. Top dollar, I mean, you'll always get a, 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 a brewery, you'll always get a brewery in, but they just supply a grog. You know, 60 cases of grog is what you, the norm. Uh, that's fine, no problem. You know, that's for me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, product placement in Australia is no, is a no-go, unfortunately. In America, like I remember Huggies on, on that Tom uh, Tom Selleck film, you know, the, the Three Men and the Baby, they put up three and a half million on that film, and it turned Huggies into the biggest, you know, uh, nappy company in the world. But but we don't have that in here. But yeah, it's a good call if you can get them. Okay. Um, I think um, we're done. Yeah. I think we've covered an amazing amount of coverage here tonight and, you know, Phil, thank you because you've orchestrated a lot of things here tonight um, for me and um, I really thank you and it's your work.